Test, test. Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath. And also good evening to the, those who are online right now watching. And we are very blessed today that the North Shore Plant Church will be the one that is leading us in our Vesper celebration today. So, without further ado, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everyone to uh, to sing with us. 
for praises and song. And um, before that, I invite uh, Brother Bob to give us our opening prayer. And again, happy Sabbath to everyone. Welcome. Good evening, a happy Sabbath. Can you bow your heads with me, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord, for your day of rest. Thank you for getting us through a, a week uh, with maybe struggles, sickness, but you helped us through it, and we thank you for that. Lord, now we ask that you be with us as we come to you for worship. Help us to put aside whatever we have on our minds. That we focus on you tonight. For the word that you have for us, to your servant, Pastor Norman Cody. Give us the words that you want him to speak. Help us to put in our hearts. Help us have open minds and hearts. Also ask for the people who are struggling with sickness, that uh, special prayer for Pastor Cody. He's not able to be here tonight, suffering from uh, a cold, but we ask that you give him recovery and a speedy uh, um, healing, if it's your will, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for the ones that are here tonight. Bless their lives, bless their families. Be with the ones that are on their way, keep them safe. And the ones that are not here tonight, whatever their, pro whatever their reason is, that we need to be with them as well. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for our health. And uh, thank you for this evening. Thank you for listening to our prayers. Thank you for many blessings. And thank you for giving us a sin. That's all I ask. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, good evening and happy Sabbath to everyone. It's nice to be here with you this evening. And this evening before uh, we start our whisper meeting, we're going to sing praises to the Lord. Uh, let's sing, We Gather Together, hymn number uh, eight. next song, hymnal number 15, My Maker and My King.
Rejoice ye pure in heart. Um, hymn number 27. Let's all stand. <laughs> the song that we are going to sing tonight is entitled Find Us Faithful. So please stay with us because <laughs> we're so busy we haven't had practice. <laughs> so just like you just listen to the lyrics. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much for this wonderful song. Uh, before we start today, I want to introduce our speaker. It's uh, Pastor Norman Cote, the senior pastor of Westminster Seventh-day Adventist Church. And everybody knows him. I don't personally know him, but I always see him in the Deer Lake School Board meeting by a Zoom. And uh, he is married with, uh, he has a Filipino wife and two daughters. So he's uh, one daughter? No, two daughters, one son. Two daughters and one son. And for sure, he's a Filipino by heart. And uh, Pastor, we wish that we will be blessed with your message. We know that we have a message that's, for us today, tonight. And uh, thank you so much, Pastor, for coming here. And uh, can we bow our head? I'm gonna pray for Pastor Norman. Uh, Father in heaven, Lord, as we bow down to you, we ask for your presence, Lord. May the word that will be shared today uh, will change us, change our heart, and we try to be focused, Lord, and not in this world, but to focus in you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Testing one, two, three. Is it on? We're on? Sounds good. Welcome everyone. It's good to be here together with you to worship together and to bring in the Sabbath and uh, it's wonderful to have Vespers together and to worship him, to praise him, to glorify him. And uh, God is listening to our praises. Amen? Amen. He's wonderful. So I'm going to open up in a word of prayer before I begin. I'm missing something here. There we are. Just keep myself in time here. All right. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity here again. Father, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon each one of us here, that's here in person, and those that are watching through live stream. Lord, I pray for them, and I ask your blessing upon them and those that may watch it later. We ask your guidance and your spirit to help me choose the correct words that uh, would motivate, would encourage and strengthen each one of us. I pray for clarity of thought too, as well. Thank you, Lord. Bless now we pray in the name of Jesus and everyone says amen. Amen. How is your magnetism for God? How is that going? Is it possible that we may have lost that magnetism for God? As we think about this subject, we're going to turn our Bibles now to the book of Acts. The book of Acts in chapter, chapter 8. Chapter 8. And I want to read with you for you in that book, that wonderful book of Acts. So many lessons we can learn in this wonderful book that was written by not the Apostle Paul like some people think. It's Dr. Luke that wrote this book and so wonderfully written. So many lessons. He is not a Jew. He was a Gentile, right? And that's interesting also. So here we are at the book of Acts, chapter 8, and verses 29 to 38. I begin to read. Um, verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him, and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep in the slaughter and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. And now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he 
baptized him. May God add his blessing on the reading of his word. Here we have a man that was at the feast there previous to meeting with Philip. Let's get that context. The Feast of Pentecost. There was a great, great outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the people of God. There in the upper room, approximately 120 disciples were praying and were gathering together to unite to come together in unity, in one accord, not the Honda Accord, but in one accord, and uh, in being unified. And so there they were in the upper room praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and right on time, according to prophecy, the inauguration of Jesus, he had left already to heaven, and there the anointing would fall upon the whole earth. And there they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And God blessed those believers as they then they began to pray that God would then move through them and become a magnet for Jesus. And that power would come upon them as Jesus promised prior to him leaving. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you in Acts 1.8, then you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. And so they believe Jesus' words. Don't you believe Jesus' words? When he says something, it will happen. And indeed it did. And there they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And tongues of fire came upon them. And they began to speak with other tongues and languages. I'm not going to go into detail about tongues. I know there's some issues on that, some controversies. But we know this, the Holy Spirit was upon them. We know that for sure, and God blessed tremendously. And then they began to pray or preach, or who did? Peter began to preach the word of God. And there they were uh, blessed. Many gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. And many were, followed Jesus into the watery grave and were baptized. And the Ethiopian was there. He listened to all this. He had not yet made that commitment. But God would have it. And God can read the hearts of mind, minds of men and women and children. And he led Philip to meet this Ethiopian eunuch, the treasurer of Queen Candace. And there he met her, him on the chariot on the way to Ethiopia. And he was blessed as he was studying the word of God there from the book of Isaiah. And there he began to see there is something here I'm missing. And of course, God would bring, have it that he would bring Philip and have this divine appointment and be a magnet to this gentleman who needed to understand the truth of God's word. And that came through the, uh, the evangelist Philip. He was also a deacon, but he was a doing evangelism. And God led him to him. And he went up on the chariot and began to explain the truth of God's word. In, in uh, the Ethiopian responded receptively. He says, unless someone teaches me, God had him just where he wanted him. He had Philip where he wanted him, and he had the Ethiopian just where he wanted him. And God wants you just where you are to do his bidding. And, one, and many times you will have divine appointments just like Philip and work as an evangelist to witness for Jesus and to bring souls to Christ. And so you too can be a magnet for Jesus. There in verse, or it, yes, in Isaiah 58 and 7 and 8 was quoted. That's what he quoted there. He was led as a sheep. And that's what he was reading. He wasn't understanding that this was Jesus. Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus. 
And they did not understand. He did not understand. This is the anointed one. But Philip explained to him this wonderful truth that this is the Jesus that had been preached by Peter earlier. Earlier. And so God revealed to him and brought it to his mind to understand this wonderful truth that Jesus loved him also. And Jesus wanted him to make a decision to follow him. Amen? Wow. Wouldn't you like to have that power? Wouldn't you like to be used of the Lord in that manner? Wouldn't you want to see souls won as a result of a divine appointment? I'm sure you all would love to see that happen. But don't just think it might happen. It can happen, and it will happen if we believe it. It's important that we must believe what God wants for you and I is to have his spirit, his spirit to fill us so that we may engage others to connect with the God of this world. and Of us, I should say. We're not talking about Satan. We're talking about our God, our creator. He loves us. We are talking about our creator who loves us and he gave his only begotten son to die for us. It's worth telling others about this God through our example, through our uh, good deeds. We're going to talk about all this, how we can indeed be a, a magnet to those who are without Christ. Amen? We can do that. How do we become a magnet? Or how do we become magnetic? This is a big question we need to answer. We speak of many in the Bible who, who were, had this magnetism upon them. Many of them had. Was Moses a magnet for Jesus, for God? Yes. Was Joseph a magnet? Yes. Deborah, was she a magnet, the prophetess? Yes. We could go throughout the, was Esther a magnet for Jesus? Yes. God has a plan for you where he would have you be a magnet for him. And so, as we delve into this, how you can indeed be a magnet for him, let's look at three principles that we can apply. We can apply three principles that we need to understand tonight so that we can be a powerful magnet for him. You see, I read here a quote from Pastor Joel Smith. I, re I, I, re I retrieved this off of the website, uh, Sermon Central. And the, it says here, the truth is that part of the problem today is Christians in the church, for some reason, we have lost the qualities that made the early believers so attractive. Admittedly, there are some people who will refuse Christ no matter what. But we can do much better and become much more winsome to a lost and dying world. And that's what I'm sharing for you today. I want to encourage you. I want to strengthen your walk. And that's why I want to share with you this, these principles tonight so that you can indeed uh, be effective like Philip was of old. The disciples had a positive influence. They had a positive influence in whom they connected with. Jesus taught them how to be a magnet. How they could be a bear fruit for his glory. That's what a person that is a magnet for Jesus will bear much fruit. How they could do that. And he taught them for three and a half years. And Peter was one of those. And he failed sometimes, right? He failed sometimes. 
but God would bring him up because he was more than willing to surrender all to Jesus so that he could be a positive influence in someone's life that needed Jesus as well as the other disciples. Andrew, his brother, was a positive influence, a magnet for Jesus. Today, I want to say here in Vancouver Filipino Church and, and all the other Filipino churches that are watching here, North Shore, Burnaby, and uh, we have um, many others uh, in Surrey, Filipino churches. I'm so happy to know that the fastest growing churches in Canada are the Filipino churches. Did you know that? In the Adventist church, that is. In the Adventist church. That's wonderful. We can pat ourselves on the back. Amen? But there's still more. There's still more out there, right? That need to be one. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So let's, let's begin with what? We need to have personal revival. Or, some like to use the term, scholars like to use the term, spiritual renewal. All right? Renewal. You're not completely dead, but you need to do some changing. And uh, renewal. Changing of the mind and uh, things that aren't quite in line with Jesus and his ways. That's what we're talking about. Spiritual renewal. A lack of spirituality is one of the reasons we lose that magnetism in the church. The lack of spirituality is the reason we lose that magnetism. And so we need to begin. Foundational principle number one. Prayer to God. Praying to God. And that, that, that doesn't just happen on Vespers and we bow our heads. Yeah, I did my prayer, Lord. I'm a magnet for Jesus. Right? No. We must go in our closets, so to speak. You don't have to take that literally. But some people, I think, have. A big enough closet, they'll sit in there. Nobody distracts them. But what we're talking about is get away from all the noise and all the interruptions and even... Throw that somewhere else. This thing. I just need it for my time. I can see that clock here anyways. But anyways. Friends, we need to put those distractions away. And we need to come together and pray. I know I've been so at times in the morning. That's when the devil really wants to interrupt my prayer and with God. And have to learn to just shut this thing down and shut off what's out there and tune in with Jesus. Tune in with him. Amen? It's important. Second Chronicles chapter 7, talking about prayer to God. Have you read this? I'm sure you have. Let me refresh your memories. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verses 14 and 15. 15. Today we, I'm not using PowerPoint, I normally do, but I want us to look at the scriptures ourselves. It's easy to watch the screen and rather than look at our Bibles, but sometimes I, I think it's important we open our Bibles. Here we are, verses 14 and 15. It says, if my people... Whose people? My people, which is God's people. Amen. Who are called by my name will humble themselves. So is, so is this representing God's people here? Amen. Those that are watching by uh, live stream? Yes. You are those people as well as Israel here. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Wow. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. 
my eyes. God says, God is saying this through the prophet, that if you would do this, I'm going to listen to you. My ears are open. When you have this type of prayer. And what did we learn in this text about praying? Number one, we must humble ourselves. Humble. Be humble. Number one. And then what did he say? Seek my face. Pray and seek. Once you've humbled yourself, recognizing that God is your creator, acknowledging him as the Lord and Savior of your life, and the one who sustains you and keeps you day by day, then you are coming to him in a humble fashion. And you're bowed before him. Some say, I just bow on my desk, or I pray on my, uh, while I'm driving, or I pray. However you do it, do it. <laughs> and be humble. I do believe we should, at times, go on our knees if that's possible, if, if, if you're able to, if uh, your health doesn't, pre uh, pre doesn't prevent you from doing that, I would recommend that. Once in a while, go on your knees and pray to, this, to our God. And he says, seek my face. Now, when you think about that for a moment, what do you see with that word seek? Seek, you know? I tell you, I've had it happen when my girls have been, well, I don't like to say I lost them, but they somehow got away from me. And I tell you, there's all kinds of things that I do to look for them, seek them, and find them. And sometimes I've had to page for them. And um, thankfully, they're still with me. They still love me. <laughs> but we need to seek God. God is looking for you to come to him. And he's drawing you to him. He wants you to come to him. And I can shout out, Gabrielle, Rachel, come, come. But they don't hear my voice. Maybe they're too distracted with their, the toys, the row and the toys. I usually go there when they were younger kids, of course. And... Uh, God is looking. He's calling out for you. He's seeking you. And that's why he says, seek for me. Call, I'm calling you, but come to me. Let's join together. Let's join together. Yet let's unite in prayer. And then he goes on to say, what? What does he say? He says, and turn from their wicked ways. Wow. Well, I thought God's people weren't wicked. <laughs> well, they do wicked things, right? God says, turn from them, whatever it is. Pornography, turn, turn it off. Turn it off. If television is uh, getting more time than necessary, turn it off. I love to watch hockey, and sometimes I just have to put on the PVR, and get back to talking to my God. It can get a, be a distraction. And then I can just use the later when I'm connected with my God. Then I watch it, the game, but not every minute. With PBR now, I can skim right through the, to the end. Last five minutes. Find out what the score is, right? Maybe hockey's not your thing. Maybe it's basketball. Maybe. I think Filipinos number one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that. I like watching basketball, but hockey is number one for me. Of course. I'm born here, right? I'm born in Canada, so that's natural. But we have these distractions. I'm just bringing that out because sometimes they get in our way from seeking God. They can be an hindrance to getting close to God. God is calling you. Are you calling for him? Mm. Are you calling out for him? Let those distractions be removed. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then he goes on, then I will hear. Oh, friends, then I will hear from heaven. 
Not that he doesn't hear us, but he really hears us when we pay attention to what he says to do. Conform to his way. Comply to his standards and say, yes, Lord, I will do it. I will surrender. But do we sometimes speak what God wants to hear, but in our heart we're not quite there? Mm. Ouch, pastor. Don't, don't go there. God knows our heart. We can't fool God. We can't fool him. So be honest with God. You know? God, I don't feel like coming to you, but I know it's the right thing. Be honest. I want to come to you. I want more of you. But sometimes I just don't feel like it. Can you make me feel like it, God? Be honest with God. He knows our hearts anyway, so why hide it from him? Hmm? That's what he wants. He wants a conversation with you. He wants a relationship with you that is honest and true and that will be vibrant. And friends, we can really be uh, a blessing to God in, in service. He wants you to be a magnet. And if you come to him, that's number one principle. To be a magnet, you need to know the one whom you're serving. And you get that through prayer, through prayer. Moving on. Moving on. The Lord has some things here for us to hear. I know the time is slipping on me. But I want to share with you Acts 10.38. The second principle. So the first principle is getting in prayer, right? Getting rid of those things that are hindering our connection with God. Second principle for your magnetism to explode is that which is the performance of good deeds. Ah, let's look at Acts 10, 38. Take a look at that. Let's read what it says in Acts 10, 38. Somehow, I misplaced my, my, oh, I know where I put it. I was looking for my glasses. 10, 38, got it. Here we are. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power, who went about doing good, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And likewise, God wants to fill you with this Holy Spirit so that as you do the good deeds that he's called you to do, and we all have talents and abilities, spiritual gifts, you know what God has called you to do, as you do that and perform those things, you may be able to relieve those who are oppressed by the devil. Because you are relieved. Because you know the source of your joy, of your peace, of your wisdom. You know the source. You have eternal life in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. And now you want to give it out to others. That's why you need to come to him every day. As you are filled, you want to bless others. Right? There's an analogy. Perhaps you've heard this one. There's uh, the Dead Sea. Nothing goes in there. Right? It's, it's you know, there's no creek that goes in there. It's just, does, it's dead. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. It's this yuck. But if you go, to some of these British Columbia lakes. There's always creeks and rivers flowing into these lakes. And they're vibrant. The Okanagan, beautiful. Um, I know some lakes around my, where I grew up in Prince George, there's actually a lake called Norman Lake, believe it or not. They didn't name it after me, but I always tell people they did. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but there's those kinds of things. It makes it vibrant. The water, the flow. And you, what did Jesus say? He says, you, I'm in you with rivers flowing, rivers of water in you. 
He wants you, and he used water often. He told the woman at the well, what did he tell her? He says, this water, you will thirst again. But the water that you will never thirst again is salvation in Jesus. And uh, she, she got it. She got the message. She got the memo, and she went. She went back to her hometown in Samaria, and there she became uh, a, a magnet. And she was only converted one day. One day. And she, the whole town had to come because this woman had a, they saw that there was a big difference because she had had five husbands and she was living common law with her six husbands. And he revealed that to her. And she, she was just amazed with that alone. But he says, the true worshipers worship me in spirit and in truth. And so God's people who are magnets worship him in spirit and in truth, and they indeed perform good deeds unto God, not for self-exaltation, but for his glory, for his honor. And that's how you can also become a magnet and a force where you are today, wherever you are, in your workplace, in your schools, in uh, wherever you are, you can be a magnet for Jesus. Praise God. We could talk about Dorcas, how she was used of God in her ability to sow, and uh, she was full of wonderful good works and charitable deeds. Wonderful. So, moving forward, third principle of your magnetism. So we talked about prayer, we talked about doing good works, deeds. Thirdly, the proclamation of his word. The procl I've alluded to this already, but I want to focus in on it. And that's in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. What did he say there? We don't need to go there. We know it. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So God's people are given the authority to go and make disciples. Go. It's an imperative command that you go, that you make. It's intentional. You go and make. They're not just going to walk up to you, although some people do. You have to make a point to the Lord. The Lord set me up with some people that I can share Jesus with. And he will do that. He will do that. Praise God. Praise God for the awesome privilege to serve him and be a magnet for him. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus healed a great multitude and he went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. You can be a witness where you are. Friends, wherever you are, if you know Jesus, you understand his word. You can preach Jesus to people. You can proclaim his name. God can use you, your testimony. God can use you. Likewise, Philip taught and guided a man confused and he who was a religious man but was not understanding the passage. He was in confusion. And we have many in this world that are in the confusion. They're seeking heaven for answers, but no one to come to them. And so God is looking for you to be willing to go where he calls you to go and be led of the Spirit to go. Be willing to go, surrendering all and saying, Lord, I will. I will go. I will go. Use me. And you know, you say, well, I'm not good enough at this. I'm not as a very good speaker or teacher. Uh, but I find the more you, you, you allow God to use you, the better you get at it. The better you get at it. And that goes with anything you, you do in life, really. The more you do of it, the better you get at it. And God wants to use you. He can use a willing servant much easier than a person who thinks he knows it all. A humble, willing servant. Friends, he wants you to be used of him, to be a magnet. Okay, con let's conclude this. Revival. 
renewal, if you wish, spiritual renewal. It's going to come because of three, three principles. I've simplified it. Prayer to God, real relationship, honest prayer to God, seeking his face. Performance of good deeds, the deeds that he's an, en enabled you to be able to help others, whether it's feeding the, the hungry or sewing clothes for some needy person or just being a friend to some lonely person. Performance of good deeds or just helping somebody overcome their health condition, praying for them. Perhaps God could use you to perform a miracle of healing. God wants to use you. And then thirdly, proclaim his word. Bring a word to the people that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ that he's, the Bible says, those who call upon him, whosoever. It shall come to pass in uh, Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon him shall be saved. Wow, powerful stuff. By grace through faith ye are saved. It is not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. You can proclaim that. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Friends, they're all over the scripture. The scriptures relate to that. Come unto me, you that are heavenly laden. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me. And he says, come, come. And people that are burdened with sin, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your, uh, your sins to him, he will forgive you and cleanse you of all your sins. Wow, powerful stuff. All these promises. God will bring it back to you. I have had it more, than off, more often than not that when I needed a scripture that I hadn't thought of for two, three years, it comes and flashes into my mind and that person needed it for that moment. Thank you, Pastor. They said, many times they said, and I can see their reactions because the Spirit brings it back and it's exactly what they needed at that moment. Be willing to be open to the Spirit to speak his word. And God will use you. I remember when I wasn't even a pastor yet, I had done some training as a lay evangelist, and I went to Romania, and there I wondered what I could do. This poor, simple, individual, commoner, there, I was there to proclaim the gospel, and one day they asked me to share my testimony. I said, what? What's that going to do here? I don't know. Uh, okay, if you... <laughs> I, so I, I was willing. I said, okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do. I shared my testimony. It was translated. I, I shared it in 15 minutes. So I did a life testimony in seven minutes. Have you ever done that? Can you imagine a preacher doing that? Oh, that's, that's amazing. And God blessed. I didn't know what was happening. But the pastor of that church told me, one lady said, very, you, your testimony related to her almost to the dot. Exactly what I was, uh, went through, she could relate to, and now she wanted to join the church. Can you imagine that? God can use you wherever you are. Miracles can happen, friends. Believe them and expect them to happen because God says you can. You can. It will happen. Nothing is impossible with him, amen? All things can happen with his power, amen. For you, if you want to be a positive influence, connect with him. Perform those good deeds and proclaim his word. Be willing soldier for, be a willing soldier for Jesus Christ, amen? So I will close with that. And may God bless you. I pray that you will make that decision. And we're going to have a closing song. I don't know what they've chosen. I, I did send one out, but I don't know if that's the one you're going to sing. But I had, uh, my eyes have seen the glory. But whatever you've got. I'm, I'm fine with whatever you prepare. Okay. Thank you. And as you're singing, remember, say to the Lord, I want to be a magnet for you. Amen? That's Amen. it. All right. God bless. God bless for, for your timely message and the challenge that we have is always to be connected with him. Amen. So we can do that if we trust God and ourselves says trust and obey.
So let's all stand and sing. Trust and obey. Him, uh, Church Hymnal 590. benediction at this time. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being present with us during this wonderful Vespers meeting. I pray that your spirit continually abide with us. Father, we want to be your magnets. We want to have what Jesus had and that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good for mankind and pointing them to your Heavenly Father. And our God, O oh Lord, do it again. Renew us, O oh Lord, and strengthen our walk and give us courage that we may have many divine appointments 
helping others know Jesus, the Jesus we know. And we pray for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. On behalf of the Vancouver Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church, we'd like to thank the North Shore Church for leading us in our best prayer and thank you Pastor Norman for reminding us to be a magnet and uh, we cannot do that if we don't surrender 100% to Jesus. Good night and happy Sabbath to everyone and we'll see you tomorrow.